What's up, everybody? Jeff here, and I have a very special guest with me, Mr. Douglas Scoundrels. How you doing, Doug? Oh, hello. I'm doing all right. <laughs> so for the like three people out there who may not know who you are, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I am Douglas Scoundrels, one of the hosts, one of the many hosts of Steam Powered Scoundrels, the now oldest Malifaux podcast out there, and the host and sole creator of the Artifactors Union, a YouTube series where I go and assemble all of the hard kits for the Malfo game. Um, so people are less upset about that. The oldest Malfo podcast, is that a fact? Confirm? Yeah, uh, it was um, Schemes and Stones were older than us, but Kyle's kind of taken a hiatus from producing stuff. So yeah, it's us now. Very cool. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Anybody is not familiar with either of those two things, they'll be linked in the description. So make sure you go down there and check them out. Highly recommend. Yeah, I could. I've also have just a, a long list of other things I've done. If you want me to spiel about them? <laughs> all right, I'm going to give you ten seconds. Rattle them all off. Go. Okay, I created the Bonanza Brawl uh, game type for Malifaux. Go ahead and check it out. It's really, really fun. I also created the uh, character sheet for Through the Breach on Roll Twenty. Um, I do lots of stuff. I like this game this universe very prolific in the malfo community of, of all types so like yes. i said there's probably only three people watching this who don't already know who you are but i have you here because you are a lore aficionado and as your shirt evidences you are also a big arcanist fan and funny enough i have the black version of the shirt on and that was not planned so a couple of weeks ago, if anybody missed it, I did a video about how Weird originally was planning on splitting the Arcanists and the MNSU into two different factions. This was before the Explorer Society became the eighth faction. And I talked about what, where I think all the existing masters would have ended up. And then I talked about how I think that a lot of the Explorer Society masters may have been planned in their early stages to go into either the Arcanists or the MNSU. And we got a lot of really interesting comments with ideas and points of disagreement and reasons why people thought that things might have worked out a little bit differently. So I thought it'd be fun to have Doug come on and talk about some of those comments and what we think about them. So to start off, I'll throw up a image of my breakdown for the original eight masters. And I think uh, it seems like me and Doug were pretty much on the same page with, with the original eight. I think we, we, we agreed on how the breakdown would go. Exactly. You had great reasoning behind everything, too. We'll start off with an easy one here, where uh, someone is basically agreeing with me, but uh, maybe more firmly than I put it in the video. So, Rhett Nab, who is uh, uh, also notably making videos about the other side now, so you should check those out. He said, I agree with your list overall. One point I want to make is that, in my opinion, Colette is firmly on the MNSU side for the same reason as May. What they really want is to protect the people below them and let them thrive. She has some magic, but what she really has is friendship, and that's all MNSU. So he's bra he's putting them in the same positions that I put them in, but he feels, I think, a little bit more strongly about at least Colette than I do. Just, he's saying you should have put your foot down on it. <laughs> I think I hedged on a lot of them because... I think, uh, you know, a, a big theme through all this, and, and this goes for everyone whose comment we're going to touch on here, but I think there are no real right answers when it comes to most of this stuff. This is just kind of what we think makes the most sense based on our reading of the lore. Um, but I think a lot of them I, I hedged on with a few, a few exceptions. Uh, <laughs> what's your thinking on Colette being very firmly on the eminent side? I'm, I'm pretty much the exact same as, as Retnab. Um, she at the end of the day it's more of people that are loyal to ramos versus people that are loyal to the union people that are loyal to ramos being those in the arcanists and colette really hated the guy <laughs> she she was she's probably happy that he's gone she's more than likely delighted that he he is out of her life so i don't see her cozying up to the people that are super duper loyal to the guy but also, yeah, she is a, a magic user. She is sort of like the poster child for the prestidigitation magical college. But anyone that's played through the breach or knows a little bit of stuff about this or can kind of look at the game of Malifaux and maybe put it together, 
Malfo allows you to be magical inherently. If you're really good at something, you will get supernaturally good at that thing. So effectively, every master in the game has some sort of magical quality to them. So just because you are a wizard of some kind doesn't mean you deserve to be in the Arcanists. Yeah, I agree with all that. I think the only reason that I hedged with her was because even though everyone does have magic, right? Magic is powerful in Malifo, so when you come through, a lot of people just discover that they have magical powers, or their existing magical powers get stronger. I think the the thing that... The reason I was having a hard time really putting my foot down on that one is that she looks very Arcanist-y. She, I think she would look good next to Rasputina and, you know, other very magic-focused crews, because that's her whole thing, is is the prestidigitation magic. I also, my read on her, I don't think I felt that she hated Ramos quite as much as as you. I, I, I agree that she didn't like Ramos. I think that she thought that he was, uh, that he kind of looked down on her, and I think she also didn't like how he kind of micromanaged her and, and her her girls. But... I'm not so sure I would go as far as to say that she hated him. What do you, where, where are you getting that from? Reading into the character, if you read her stories, she doesn't have to outwardly yell and scream and swear at the man to despise him. And just maybe it's the case of like, if I put myself in her situation as best as I could, I would absolutely loathe him. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. I, I, and I think... I think the the lore that we've gotten since third edition definitely backs that up where the way that she talks about him, she's clearly not fond of him. I'm just trying to think back before that and I'm not so sure I was I would I would have gone so far as to say that she hated hated him. I, I think she she clearly didn't love him. She wasn't his biggest fan. <laughs> I don't think that means she can't be in the Arcanist. Um and then for Mei Fang, I think for me that was a clearer MSU, no Arcanist for me. I think she, I think Colette was closer to the Arcanist side than Mei Fang. Do you agree with that? Um, if I had to pick one to go into the Arcanist, then yes, I would pick Colette over Mei Fang. Yeah, I, I think I'm mo- I I very largely agree with what Rednap said. Is Mei Fang really seems like she's very focused on her people, even more so than Colette, and I think that pushes her, you know, that her, her interests align much more closely with the MSU than, than a lot of other factions or other, other. Absolutely. I mean, when it comes down to it, she's very concerned about the people that work under her. Um, she didn't initially, she was mildly savage about it, but, um, we've seen her grow into actually caring about those in the foundry keyword. And that aligns a lot more with the union and their goals more so than the arcanists. Yeah, she's an interesting one to me because she's got, in this conversation, she's kind of got three allegiances to juggle, in a sense, because of her connection to the Ten Thunders. But I think, and again, this is kind of a third edition uh, thing, but I think her 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 beef with Misaki kind of reinforces her allegiance to them. And as you, in my mind, that that, that was her, is kind of her, her happiest home, to an extent. I think her story at the start of third edition was possibly... Um, weirds hinting at that if they did this split Misaki would actually fully break off I mean May would fully break off from the Ten Thunders I mean they they were already decided to do that I mean second edition Ten Thunders was the dual faction faction and they definitely curbed that back pulled back on that in third edition I figured the plan was to just bring Mei Fang who always really seemed more like she would fit in with the Ar- the Arcanists, or in this case, the MNSU, than she did the Ten Thunders. I mean, not everyone I mean, not everyone that is a dual faction is that devoted to their other faction in the Ten Thunders, but she just really never seemed to be happy with what the Thunders were doing. But it's also interesting that we never really saw her interacting with the Arcanists in very significant ways. She has a couple stories where she, she spoke to Misaki and... and- claimed that she was loyal to her and and at one point even said like i'll go kill ramos right now if you tell me to it's hard to say what how genuine she was being in those conversations for sure and like how much of this is i'm in a gang and they'll kill me if i don't say these things but <laughs> now now she said that but that doesn't mean she hated the guy all right i mean sure fair <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah, no, I, I, I think, uh, I think that would actually be interesting. Maybe the, maybe, maybe the follow up to this video will be what would have happened if all of the masters that were dual faction in uh, second edition from Thunders broke off. Who, who would we have gotten in Thunders instead? Because we would have to replace her if that yeah. happened. Yeah. And eventually um, McCabe, I guess, but he's kind of all over the place. The, the poor man just never catches a break. <laughs> all right, so let's go on to a little bit more of a, a, a rockier one here. LCWV7TZ. I don't know if that's supposed to say something. I'm just going to go with that. Um, they say that they disagree with a lot of my choices. The Arcanists are generally a really disunified faction, though. The only masters that purely represent Arcanists and MNSU directly are Karis and Tony, respectively. Now, just be, just going off of that, I don't disagree that they are a disunified faction, but I think if you compare them to other Malifaux factions, they're actually pretty unified in some ways. Because, mo you know, like the Resurrectionists, zero unification among all of them. <laughs> I think really only the guild and to an extent the Explorer Society are very unified. What do you think? Yes. I could see that. I mean, that, that was the, always the appeal of Malifaux is that you would have a reasonable narrative reason for fighting someone else in faction. Is that everyone was just very loosely associated with each other. I think maybe they're referring to the theming and that the the way the different keywords are so much different from each other makes it look even more disunified than other factions. Yeah, and I think that's why this this topic is interesting because I think it breaks down along the lines of the Arcanist side and the MNSU side, but I'm not sure that I would characterize them overall as being particularly disunified, but um, but yeah, I guess that point is valid. Um, they then agree that uh, Marcus and Rasputina don't really make any sense being affiliated with the faction at all. And they make the argument that they should break off into other factions entirely, but we don't really need to get into that because we could say that about everyone, I think. Mm -hmm. And they go on to say, Mei Fang is, them is thematically an MNSU master for sure. Other than the elementals, it would be very easy to see how the rail workers in MNSU would end up crossing paths and working together. Hoffman is another tricky one. To me, he thematically very much fits the bill of Arcanus over anyone else. High tech, Magitech constructs, as opposed to simpler machines like the pork chop, and magically and mechanically enhanced humans are very Arcanist. Never mind the academic intellectual pursuit of knowledge thing he has going on feels very Arcanist. He's also a powerful mage that is able to control most machines with his mind alone and manipulate electricity a bit. One problem is in the lore, he has no dealings whatsoever with either MNSU or Arcanist, so it doesn't really make sense other than he met Ramos that one time. I think after learning the truth about the Arcanists and that they didn't sabotage him, his and Ryle's crossing might make him more sympathetic to them. His story in 3E also has him only working with Arcanists. As far as we know, he's never even met anyone from MNSU, so I don't see that thematically or in the lore for him. Take it away, Doug. Okay. Um, Marcus and Rasputina... I, I get what they mean by they don't seem Arcanists at all. And this, some of the the weight of this is carried by the fact that they were in the faction to begin with. They were at least somewhat loyal to Ramos, and therefore it would make the most sense that they would continue on with some form of that faction. Um, also, they're very much, leave me alone. I'm going to do my own thing. I don't necessarily like hate working with other people. But also, I am so intrinsically linked to magic. I'm going kind of back in my thing. It's like, yeah, everyone has magic, but these characters are very much... Uh, I do magic, and I do mad, kind of taboo magic. And so I would go put myself in line with the people that are just about freedom of magic uh, at all costs in, in, in this case, especially with the Karis at the helm. So I it makes it still makes perfect sense. Like if you were just going to dissolve the Arcanists, yeah, I wouldn't see it being hard at all to put them in other factions on like Tony. But yeah, I, I think that's a uh, that's a good point. I think I I mentioned in the original video that like they were tied to the Arcanists through their relationship with with Ramos, which is a big problem that we're dealing with now because Ramos being out of the picture kind of scatters everyone to an extent. But yeah. that was that was such a delicious part of the lore. Uh, getting Ramos arrest, uh, arrested that uh, that just led to so much in this game. 
both mechanic and lore wise. I, I love that they did that. Also, I didn't like the guy, so <laughs> no complaints for me. There's been an ongoing debate on my Discord about whether Ramos deserved what he got or, or did. he did. <laughs> I'm 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 Team Tony all day, so you know. uh, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't think that's quite as much of an interesting conversation because, like you said, unless we're just going to dissolve the Arcanists, I don't see any good reason to just remove them from the Arcanists. They do still have that goal in mind, I would assume, to some extent of, you know, liberating magic users and, and stopping the guild's oppression. Um, but I, I don't see a good reason to say that, oh, we should just put them in another faction. The The Hoffman thing, though... I have lots of issues, so I figured yeah. I'd take a crack at that. <laughs> so the the reason behind like blaming the Arcanists for the whole Ryle thing, which I guess I forgot, I didn't realize that was the reasoning, but if that if that's true, um, was probably the way to keep him out of the Arcanists in the first place. Um, him being the, the, the technology guy in the Arcanist, having the sub theme of technology, um, just was a perfect fit for him. And now with Ramos out of the way, you kind of need to want someone to come in and st take his stuff. So both mechanically and lore wise, it makes sense. Now he doesn't, as, as far as I understand, he doesn't seem to really enjoy the fact that he is incredibly magically gifted. Um, all of his stuff seems to be, I can do this with engineering. I don't need to use magic unless I absolutely have to. Um, engineering is a real thing in this game. You don't have to be magical to make constructs. Uh, magic helps. Magic makes it easier without a soul stone, but you can definitely make constructs without having to resort to spells. So, he doesn't need to be in the Arcanist, and do you think he would get along well with the extreme and just the extremities of Karis and Rasputina and Marcus? Or do you think the guy who very obviously was quite upset when someone blew up his uh, people that were working under him. He might actually enjoy working with the people that are supposedly for the working man. Like, we have a good idea on his personality. He's one of the most written about masters in the game. He's a decent person, which is why we really gravitate towards him and call him a puppy, because he's one of the few, like, <laughs> good people in the game. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's an interesting point, the kind of distinction between the magic and the and the engineering side of it, because you know, this isn't explicitly stated and, and sometimes they kind of play a little bit fast and loose with how magic really works, but it definitely seems like he has to be in proximity to the constructs to use his like powerful, just mental or, or inherent ability to just kind of, uh, I guess, telepathically control constructs. But part of what he does is maintain and, and operate the constructs and send them to other divisions and into other places. So he's not always standing next to the peacekeeper as it's doing whatever it's doing. He must be to some extent just working on these machines so that they can be animated and go off and do things with mm -hmm. other people. So the engineering side of it is probably very important to him and certainly to his underlings who don't have his, his abilities. But I, I think to me, the bigger issue here is that while when he, if I remember correctly, when he originally came over and we have this story the, the few times that he interacted with Ramos originally, he was upset when he found out that Ramos was an Arcanist because he basically drank the Guild Kool-Aid and was like, Arcanists are terrorists. And as yeah. far as we know, that's never changed. As far as we know, that's still his opinion. Ramos tried to convince him that it's not that simple, but we never really see how far they got into that conversation. And based on his interaction with Joss in the third edition story that I can't remember the name of off the top of my head, they he still seems to feel that way. He was not excited to be working with Joss. He did not want Joss showing up to help him sort of decommission these safe houses. And it was only because Joss made the argument that he wanted to sort of help the, the amalgamated creatures and, and kind of put them out of their misery that Hoffman agreed to work with them. But that was very much an MNSU thing. That is not the Arcanist side of the organization. Joss, I guess you could say was, was part of both certainly, but he, he wasn't saying we're going to go fight the guild to, to stop their oppression of mages. He was saying we're going to go save these people because they're suffering. And to your point, I think Hoffman just being a good person, I don't see him working with the Arcanists at all. I don't see him getting along with Karis. I think he would be very upset if he found out he was working with people who worked with Karis, as a matter of fact. 
Yeah, and like a completely side note, I'm relatively certain he has lost so many watchers to Karis just over the years that there's just that baseline resentment. I guess the nice thing is that his job in the guild has him interacting with the Arcanists like not at all. Like you would, th- you would think they would probably have some sort of rules or uh, their own sort of kind of laws about amalgamations, and you know, don't do that. We aren't Leviticus. Uh, so yeah, I don't I don't think he just doesn't really have a beef with them. Yeah, yeah, I, I I think to me Hoffman is probably after Tony and Karis. I think Hoffman's probably the clearest cut one for me. I don't I don't see a great a great argument for putting him in Arcanist. Then the last little bit here, Sandeep also feels very pure Arcanist to me, given his background. It was. If there was a dual faction, I think it would be either May or Colette. Probably Colette, as that would likely require May to leave Ten Thunders completely. What are your thoughts on Sandeep and where no. I put him in? <laughs> he is he is Eminescio again, just because he is like the 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 magic guy doesn't mean he's got to go in the. We will do literally whatever we have to to protect our way of life. Um, and it's it's probably. It's another reason, like, besides loyalty to Rama, it's another way to look at it is that Arcanists would be willing to sacrifice an innocent person to further their goals. And I feel like people that are in the MNSU, n- not not as much. And so, like, Sandeep fits, feels like he fits more into MNSU. However, his job... Is, when he was brought into the Arcanists, is so devotely tied to the Arcanists and less the MNSU that he feel like he would be abandoning the people he trained and the people under him if he just broke off from them and only did the MNSU stuff. He still has that loyalty to Ramos to do what he said he was supposed to do, and I think he enjoys training people. He enjoys the education part of it, and he would do that less in the MNSU. And if he's breaking off, he makes himself an enemy to people that know him very well and possibly make himself an enemy to people that he trained or that he has a lot of respect for. So yeah. I think it's very much conflicted, and his heart is more with the MNSU, but he would not leave the Arcanist. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I think... I think... I think if he had to go one way or the other, I think he's closer tied to the MNSU just because of his demeanor. But I think his ties to the to the Arcanist mean that he makes the most sense to be dual faction. The other thing, and I brought, I mentioned this a little bit in the video, was that I feel like what we learned about him in th- in the third edition book was the natural progression of his story arc up until that point. He was this very like torn, uh, conflicted person where he clearly wanted to fight back against the guild. He was clearly not happy about what the guild was doing. And he had this sort of anger in him, but he was trying to control it. He was trying to be uh, peaceful and kind of almost a pacifist until he kind of let it out with Mm -hmm. Anasuva. And I think that sort of dual nature to him means that he may, it, it, a, a, it means that he makes a lot of sense being dual faction because they're the, that's kind of the dual nature breakdown, the Arcanist versus the MNSU. But I also think that the fact that he now stays neutral between the two of them was the logical progression of his story arc where he's he he has the anger of Karis, but he has the sort of control and the and the intelligence of of Tony and doesn't want to to act on that anger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he a, a great a way to make it succinct. Um, Sandeep is in the MNSU, Bonasuva is in the Arcanists. There you go. Okay, I like that. Um, yeah, but yeah, and, and, and like I wouldn't say he's he's not neutral to the two of them. He's he's loyal to both. And both would gain benefit from him not breaking off to the other one, since his he's so intrinsically tied to training them. Um, I mean, even even though, like I said before, like he's mostly doing like the major stuff. The Arc- the MNSU still needs steam fitters, yeah, and quote unquote steam fitters, which are just mages that are called steam fitters. But, but yeah, yeah, they'd have to train some non mages to do steam fitting if if they. Uh... <laughs> I'm sure they have plenty. Well, my understanding is that it literally is just a code word. It's like a euphemism. 
at least up until a certain point. I mean, it's it's still a job, and it's a job that they would need, especially since this is pseudo steampunk of a setting. Yeah, just it's a lot easier to do that sort of thing with m- the use of magic than it is to do it by yourself. But magic's finicky. Yeah, for sure. So we got a couple of more uh, comments here that deal with sort of both the the explorer society side of it as well as the core. Uh, the original eight masters here, but are there any other masters that you want to comment on uh, among the original eight that, that we didn't talk about yet? You could also look like there's different ways you can look at splitting this up. Another one I'm going to offer up is the, I don't think the arcanist would be satisfied with the guild existing if they won. The MS- NSU, MNSU got what they wanted which is, you know, protection for the people under them and uh, considerably less from uh, oppression from the guild, they would be okay with the guild still existing. Hmm, that's an interesting one. If Tony could end the guild, would she do it? That's an interesting question. I, I, I see what you're getting at, certainly. I think, you know, the, the Arcanists, clearly their goal is to destroy and replace the guild, and I'm not sure that the union that's certainly not their stated goal would they do it if they had the chance that I, that's i think a tougher question but i i definitely i think that's a that's a uh, an interesting way to break it down for sure yeah but it's certainly not what they're working towards right you don't see uh, tony going out there and trying to you know blow up guild hq you do see carrots no. doing that so <laughs> yeah what about uh, i think the only other two we didn't really talk about were marcus and ratchetina but i don't think there's a, a ton there i no. know no. Like they're they're their first edition like I think they were the very first first edition masters, which when the Arcanists were definitely the Arcanists and the MNSC was more of an afterthought. Um also probably why Colette has such uh like aesthetically feels like she should be in the Arcanists, because very much first edition was more of the focused on magic. Yeah, the MNSU was just kind of the, the, the like loose background for it. It wasn't as much of a divide for sure. That's a good point, actually. But then but then you saw it kind of move towards a little bit more of a like every man type thing as as time went on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so then the next part of the video was talking about how the Explorer Society seems like a lot of the masters there seem like they could have potentially been plan for either the Arcanist or the MNSU. And I think the the most obvious one out of all of them is English Ivan, because English Ivan should be should have been and still should be in the MNSU or the Arcanist, because clearly that was what he was always intended to be. And we'll see him there in the future, mark my words. It's crazy that he's not, but here we are. <laughs> I guess in character I'd say I'm still mad about that. Um but yeah, I, I know when they did it. It's still just like that niggling thing. I was like, no, he was always supposed to be this. Oh, just because he's in literally the Arcanist story in that one book he's in doesn't make him an Arcanist. Just because they gave him his own super duper cool clockwork base in the middle of Arca- Arcanistville doesn't make him an Arcanist. It's because he, he knew he knew Ramos, he was working directly for Ramos, and he also was known by everyone in the Arcanist, and they recognized him on the street and were like, wow, you're a legendary agent for the Arcanist, but suddenly he's not an Arcanist anymore. I'm mad. I'm mad. <laughs> like, I, I, I even, I don't know if they, this was me, th- them eventually saying this, or this was me just like coming up with the reasoning behind, but I could have seen that just said like, oh no, his loyalty was, loyalty was mostly to Ramos. When Ramos is gone, he just left. I would have been okay with that. Not really because he was so cool and I wanted him so bad, but <laughs> I, I'll say I would be okay with that. I don't think they explicitly said that. I think it, it's, it's kind of implied, but I think that's true of a lot of them. Um, I think mm-hmm. in the in the first blurb we get on him in third edition, it says like, oh, his his loyalties are questionable or there's rumors about who he really works for. Because like in his original story, he had some mysterious benefactor he was working for, which at the time wasn't intended to be the Explorer Society, but it, obviously now that seems to be what mm-hmm. we would say that it was. But he also told people that he was working for Lucius. I think he clearly wasn't, but they like made that almost a joke in his little bio. And I was like... That, <laughs> Lucius would not be able to put up with some someone that is as... I'm going to say it's sexy as, as English Ivan yeah. taking any eyes away from Lucius. No, he's, he's got too much of an ego for that. Yeah, I agree. 
Um, yeah, um, English Ivan was, uh, without them stating it, was very obviously the first thing they came up with for third edition as a new master, and uh, when they had this idea of splitting up the Arcanists. I thought he would be better in the Arcanists, if, with the sole exception of if we kind of got rid of the stuff that was probably made after they decided to do the Explorer Society. Because if you put them in the Arcanist, you again have two spy masters in the same faction, which is really weird. Um, it's what the Explorer Society is doing now, which I don't really like, but it just it covers the same ground for no really good reason. But I don't think Nexus would do well in the MNSU either. So really, it's the Nexus as being the kind of the speed bump. But as I alluded to before, it, it, their explanation for why he didn't stick with the Arcanist was a loyalty to Ramos. And so if we go with my other reasoning for the split, he would more likely be in the Arcanist. And also, that just gives us a lovely little drama of Forbidden Lovers with Mei Feng. Um, as much as I want more uh, occasional glimmers of decent things happening in the lore, I, I do enjoy my suffering sometimes. <laughs> and still having those two, like, having needing secret meetups uh, is, is just delightful. So, um, yeah, that's that's why. And I also sort of feel like he was given the shadow magic to make him fit in better with the Arcanists. Um, but that, that that was my opinion on Ivan, and I'm I would be okay with him going into the MSU in this fictional universe universe because I love him, and I know that I would be playing MSU and not Arcanus. So, so so <laughs> you're saying that you think that they gave him the darkness magic so he would have fit in better as an Arcanus master? Yes. Okay. Because I my thinking at least internally was that he never had the darkness powers until they did the Explorer Society and they were like, he's not really weird enough or quirky enough for the Explorer Society. We're going to give him this other thing. Because I think if you take those away, he just fits into the MNSU better. I mean, the, like, the, the Ramos angle, I think, is, is fair, but I also think that's true of most of them. Like, a lot of people were there because, like, Tony was only there because of Ramos to an extent. Like, I'm sure, like, obviously her, her values align with the MNSU, but he's the one that kind of brought her there. And, the th the big thing for me was that you see his closest tie to the to the organization in the story where uh, I think it's shifting loyalties where they show up at the the protest and then Mei Feng fights the governor general right before he turns into the Burning Man and in that story when he shows up at the protest it's a whole bunch of just union workers and they turn around and they're like are you uh, English Ivan and he's like shut up shut up shut up don't say anything but they're all like super excited to see him. And like talking about how he's so legendary as a as a member of the of the union as a well I guess as the member as a member of the Arcanist but again they're kind of using it interchangeably but it seems like he's somebody that the normal everyday people know about and and sort of look up to in, in a, to an extent which doesn't make sense for a spy guy but I'll I'll, I'll allow it. <laughs> I'm not going to think about that too hard because he's cool and I love him. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of a bad spy if everybody knows you're a spy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, and I'm willing to say that I'm okay with him going in either. I just think narratively it would have been, been more fun if he went into Arcanists. And it, it would, again, the Nexus is really the, the, the problem there that I can't find a solution for. So, um, yeah, that was just my opinions on English, Ivan. I'm not going to. Weirdly enough, I'm not going to fight you on that one. I just still think he would have been better in Arcanists. I, I give that like a 60% confidence. I'm not like, yeah, I'm it's... not going to die on that hill. It's just, I think he works better. Yeah. I also, Fair. I think it's also a selfish thing of like, I would play MNSU more than Arcanist and I would want to play English Ivan. So it's, it's some of that too. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. Yeah. So next we have Dirk Krishna. That's my best guess, Dirk Krishna. Um, they say, I think Anya could be tweaked to oppose the guild's monopoly on transportation infrastructure to fit perfectly inside the union and have beef with Mayfang and Ironsides. I would... Yeah, I guess off topic there. So, I think the most common objection I had to my breakdown, and maybe you'll agree with this, is where I put Anya. So, I put Anya in the, arc, in the union, either as an antagonist to the union where her crew would be union members and she would be sort of begrudgingly 
uh, allowing them to be in the union for whatever reason, or making a very minor tweak to her backstory. And instead of her being this sort of rich, ruthless uh, baroness, if you will, uh, she would be kind of just a normal rail crew worker, which kind of makes her a little bit too similar to Mei Fang, but I think mm. it could have worked. I don't really see a great argument for putting her in the Arcanist in any way. So what do you think about that? Um, I fully believe that she should go in the Arcanist. I, I'm not going to do the, well, what if they gave her a different personality thing? Because then that, that means that everyone could go anywhere. Yeah, my, I think my thing was trying to make as few changes as I could to make them fit well in one of the factions as opposed to just saying, put them over okay. there because it's, I don't know, why not? So what, what's your argument for her making sense as an Arcanist? She makes sense for an Arcanist because of something you did prior, and that's you put Colette in the MNSU. Who's making money for the Arcanists now? Because she was their smuggler. She was the one that was bringing in all the cash. They've got no benefactor. And what better way to say, hey, these guys are not the MNSU, is if they bring in that someone that is effectively the, bo- the, the big bad of the union, the capitalist. I would not be that surprised if you could convince Anya is like, hey, we're going to overthrow the government. Do you want a position of power? Do you want to own all of the railroads? Because we really don't care about those things. <laughs> we'll, we'll personally let you execute Mei Fang. You would certainly like, be into that, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I, Anya does a double duty as being like an, anti, a, an antagonist to both Ironsides and uh, Mei Fang, I feel. Or she's kind of an antagonist to humanity in a way because she's a hyper capitalist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, the, the, it makes sense. Like, they, narratively, they would need someone to start generating money for them because they are an organization. They aren't just like Rasputina's chipping in a bunch of dollary dues and Marcus is, you know, found some pirate gold or something. Like for the the normal, you know, foot soldiers, the Arcanists, they they need to get paid. They need money to survive. So I think I can see the angle of a kind of enemy of my enemy alliance where Karis might approach her and say, hey, you're opposed to the MNSU. Well, we hate the MNSU now because me and Ironsides never made up. So why don't you join up with us and we can we can try to overtake them. The the big problem I have with her being in the Arcanist is that because the Arcanists are so fond of sort of terrorism or direct action, if you want, if you will. Business leaders do not like chaos. Business leaders like stability and they like everything to kind of stay comfortable and peaceful and the same because then they can continue to exploit the people that work for them. And I'm not sure they would, that she would want to financially support Karis, who is bombing the guild because to an extent Anya needs the guild to stay in power so that she can continue to do the things that she's doing. And unless she saw that that was going to happen quickly enough that she could benefit from it right away, I don't think she would be happy with supporting the terrorists. I think she would rather have the guild stay in power. I could almost see the argument for her becoming a guild master, which I think somebody might have a comment in there later about. Mm -hmm. Um, They don't like chaos happening to them. But if they are the ones that know about the chaos and it's not affecting them whatsoever, and the chaos just so happens to be affecting all of her competitors, also you got to think about Condor Rails is the rail system. The majority of the business does not exist inside Malifo City, which is where the concentration of Karis's actions are happening. Also, when, like by my hard line no situation is like she just would not like. Ironsides and Mei Fang would just not allow her into their faction. They, they, they're they just too opposed to that. So it might be a case of, like, I don't think she was created when we had the split in mind, but she has to be, but due to how you've set this situation up, she has to go into one of them. It's got to be Arcanist for me. Yeah, I, I, I certainly agree that if you don't make any changes to her backstory, she does not fit in the MNSU. She should be Mm. directly antagonistic to the MNSU. My, my thing is that I don't feel like she fits well enough into the Arcanist without changing her character. And I think the way that you could make her fit with making the fewest changes is to just either make her not rich and, and ruthless 
um, or make it like I said that where where the her the rest the entire rest of her crew is in the union and she sort of doesn't like that they're in the union and that could make for some interesting kind of inter MNSU rivalry without getting as as violent as it might be. I can see the argument for her opposing you know as as her character stands for her certainly opposing the MNSU. I just to me I feel like joining the Arcanist would be against her best interests. But I guess the point you made about her business being outside of the city and all of their terrorism happening inside the city, that's actually a pretty good point because if she was confident that it wasn't going to affect her business, then maybe it's worth the risk. But also, who pays them? Is it the people that are financing? I guess it's people paying for train rides is where they're making their money. So You're always going you're to need trains. You're always yeah. going to need transportation. Like Even if a bit of her stuff gets, it's, gets blown up, she's probably insured. Yeah. <laughs> but... Um, and I, I thought of another thing. If we if we're just gonna go with the 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 easy joke of the arcanist, oh, they're just terrorists. Bureaucratic terrorism is a thing. I mean, not me to judge our current government, but the definitely large corporations uh, have no hand in any sort of lawmaking or any sort of thing that definitely doesn't help anyone except themselves that's not what's happening don't come after me government <laughs> yeah no i certainly agree with that i my my issue though is just that they don't want to completely destabilize a government because if this government is destabilized then business becomes hard to do because if you can't you know, if you if there's ro- if there's roving gangs wandering up and down the street that are destroying things and vandalizing things and attacking people, then no one's going out and taking train rides, and it's not safe if you're doing it anyway. And the trains will be damaged, and there's lots of issues there. But I I actually think mm-hmm. the fact that she's not operating inside the city might be enough. And if she thought the Arcanists could do what they want to do quick enough, then maybe it, she would be mm-hmm. interested in in financing them. So that's an interesting point. It also Thanks. makes the breakdown work a lot better because if you just switch her over, then it's eight and eight on both sides and you have two full factions. Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> I finished the video and it annoyed me. I was like, oh, if I could have switched one, it would have worked so well. <laughs> yeah. So the next one is Lord Cooper could also be a guild master, not really joining them, but going to Lucius and offering the, him to hunt down Marcus. I can see a rich noble going to the military and order them to help him hunt down his personal vendetta. What do you want to do with Lord Cooper? Mm. Uh, forget he exists. Um, I'm right there with you. <laughs> uh, uh, here's like here's the, the, the problem is that I feel like everyone can probably agree when they decide, oh, we're going to do the Explorer Society. Uh, Lord Cooper and probably Maxine were the very first two things they came up with. Those are so intrinsically a part of the Explorer Society, the, the true explorer, naturalist, scientist, and the dude that's just a part of an adventure club who wants an excuse to kill large things. <laughs> For sure. Um, and uh, he, like the fact that he hunts people, I think, would be just the easiest no-no for the MNSU. Uh, sorry, hunts poor people. Of course. Um. They would just outright deny his acceptance. But of course, if you put him in Arcanus, he's going to be in there with Marcus, which doesn't make sense either. So which is why I said, I just don't, I don't think he fits in either. I, I, I originally said I would rather him be in Arcanus again because of that hard line. He, he's kind of the antithesis of what the MNSU stand for, but also his nemesis is in the Arcanus. But also that'd be fun drama when they're told to just kiss and make up i mean and my counterpoint to that and 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 also kind of to support the idea of anya potentially being in the mnsu is that everybody in the faction doesn't have to necessarily get along hamlin is in the outcast and he tried to kill all of them so Mm -hmm. you know now obviously that's not a a, a, an in-universe organization it's it's a it's only a faction for game purposes but I don't. I, I. I. think that he could potentially be in the in a faction with with Marcus, but I, I feel the same way about Cooper as I feel about Anya. In that, I don't think either of them, as we know them now, work as an Arcanist master. And I think if you make a very small tweak to their backstory, they would fit as an MNSU master, and that's why I put them there. But 
I don't think they necessarily have to go MSU. This comment is saying that he works better as as the guild. How do you how do you feel about that? Or where would you put him if it wasn't in either of the two? Outcast. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. I mean, the outcast is the the people that don't work well with anyone else. So yeah, Hamlin trying to take over Freyholt and um, fighting with. Um, I I just I just I just want to keep saying Hulk Hogan when I'm with Von Schell <laughs> fighting with Von Schell and Terra. While that's interfaction fighting again, they don't have anywhere else to go, so they're in the outcasts. That's what outcast is. No one else wants them. <laughs> yeah, I think that makes sense. I, I think that's the easy answer for for a lot of people. And and I think if if there was no explorer society, I think that's kind of the only place that Cooper works. I'm not sure I like him in the guild. I no. I, I don't I don't hate the idea that that the commenter mentions of like, maybe he goes to Lucius and is like, Hey, I'll, I'll do this thing for you in a, in like a, in like a base type of way, except that he's not being forced to work for them, but he's just like kind mm. of doing a contract. The, for them. the only way I could see, um, him working in the guild is if you look at the guild as sort of a m- reflection of Imperial, um, Britain, at this point in time, and they, they've even switched capitals now because we're past the turn of the century, and now the big bad is going to be Central Europe for some reason. Um, it's going to be more Western Europe. But anyways, and you just, because of your birthright, have a place in the government means that he would, I could see the way they would slot him in there, but I don't think he'd listen to anyone. And the theming with the, the Guild has the easiest theming where everyone except for now two masters is the head of their own department. And I'm sure you could give some sort of department to um, Bass. Yeah, the Frontier Department or something like that. What 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 what, is, what department is Cooper going to be running? <laughs> also the Frontier Department? I don't know. Yeah, uh, the, the Game and Wildlife uh, Division? Yeah, mm-hmm. not a... Uh... I, I, I like that connection and it also kind of ties in with the relationship of the guild and the Explorer Society and universe, which is that like, these are these rich people. So the guild's just kind of like, mm, yeah, we're going to let them do whatever they want. And they kind of give us some kickbacks and, and support us in, in certain ways. So they have this kind of evil uh, truce with each other. So, you know, I, I can kind of see that angle, but to your point, I, I don't think with Cooper's personality, the way that we know him now, there's no way he would actually work for the guild unless mm-hmm. there was something very, uh, serious in it for him so I don't think money would do it because he's independently wealthy so <laughs> uh, the next part of the comment is Cadmus I would put into the union but with a twist that they don't know that it's there like a hidden member that infects union members and creates sleeper agents I have almost no opinion about Cadmus and that's because Cadmus has almost no backstory except for like the basic origin story of what it comes from and the Titania tie in. So I really don't feel strongly about Cadmus being either way. I don't. Mm-hmm. I, I like that explanation. I would, I would, I would begrudgingly be okay with it because, uh, I could definitely see Cadmus targeting the MNSU specifically. If they're not going to target the guild, the MNSU is the next largest organized group that would be able to get Cadmus the most information in the shortest amount of time. Um, besides that, I feel like Cadmus works better in Arcanist if you go with the idea of uh, taking their ideals to the extreme of all magic is okay, and so they will accept all magic, which means a lot more taboo stuff. Whereas, like... I would say Nexus's hive mind is a bit more extreme than a little bit of cannibalism from the December call. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> uh, they're not great. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I I think I I was pretty much fifty fifty on Cadmus, and I think I threw it in Arcanist just for balance purposes because there was already too many MSU uh, picks for me. But um, I, I think it narratively could go either way i think it kind of fits thematically a little better with arcanist for the reason that you you mentioned of like i could see karis hanging out with with nexus i don't really see tony being super chill with that so it just kind of works better for me 
Um, yeah, and then the last little bit here is just Maxine has strangely enough outcast vibes for me. I could see her getting rescued by the Free Corps. Thoughts on Maxine? That wouldn't be awful. I think out of anyone in Explorers that would be a decent fit for the guild, it's her. Interesting. She doesn't really have any like beef with authority. Uh, she's she's a, a rich lady from Michigan. Um, right now, I, I, just, I just trying to remember if that was like in the lore. If I just figured that. Um, anyways, I don't remember them saying she's from Michigan, but you could be right. Um, there is an Agassiz cop a mine in the Yoop of Michigan. Okay. okay. Um. And there, and her father owned a mine, so yeah, that that checks out. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, which is just delightful if you picture that accent on Maxine. Um, <laughs> yeah. But while you kind of have, um, the problem is like she obviously couldn't be dual faction with Guild because that's that's Bass. But Bass really <laughs> doesn't really like the Guild. And if you didn't, what I'm trying to say is like we need to start expanding the map. Mm. I feel. That's going to be something that's happening in the lore, and I, the person that would be spearheading that in the guild is probably not Bass because he's just trying to hold the the furthest reaches of the guild uh, together. And Maxine would be the one. Yes, yeah, tally ho! I'm going to go find new cool stuff. Yeah, I'm. My only issue with her being in the guild is that I'm not sure she would like working for the guild, but she could also be like the. I'm going to turn you know, the, take the Nelly approach of like, I'm going to turn a blind eye to their atrocities and I'm just going to let them be my patron and, ex, and finance my ex, exploration. <laughs> I guess <laughs> in that way, I kind of like that there's an explorer society so that she doesn't have to be in the guild, but I think yeah. outcast would make sense to an extent, but mostly because of the, everybody can make sense in the outcast if they don't have a, another home. Um, yeah. What about thoughts on Arcanist versus MNSU for her? It's 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 along with like Cooper, like it, she's so she doesn't work in either. Um, really, you could if we're going with small tweaks to the backstory, I could see her being fine with with either. Um, like especially after she's gotten the touch of the Burning Man, um, and a little bit more madness to her mathematics, uh, she could be a decent fit for the Arcanist. But by itself. Like like vanilla Maxine, I see probably fitting in better well better with the MNSU, especially since the MNSU has more of a mechanical side to it, uh, which is a bit of a theme with her crew. Yeah, and 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 I think also the rest of her crew is you know like fishermen and normal mm -hmm. labor type people, you know machinists mm -hmm. and things like that. I think they would look. I think if you took her crew as it looks right now, again holding the Burning Man stuff aside. And just put them in the in, in the Arcanist. I think they would look, they would fit in right next to it. Yeah. You know, an MSU Tony crew. Yeah, I think what one of the ways that Nexus might be colored in as better for the MSU is literally the eyes and ears models. I just realized that. Yeah, so they, those the, like, <laughs> the those end. look like picked MSU models. Yeah, for sure. Um. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would say probably MNSU if I had to pick. Um, also, that's almost definitely because I want Horada in my faction. <laughs> I I also uh, kind of want Kia because Abyssinia is my is my jam. So I think we need more Abyssinian uh, characters in Malfo for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, so a couple more here that kind of somewhat repeat, so we don't really have to like rehash them, but just to kind of mm -hmm. highlight some of the other points that were made. The Dutchman of Post says, I think most of yours work, but move Anya over the Arcanist. Common common theme. Uh, that way, both get a railroad crew. Both also provide the faction a little of what they lost in the split. May gives the MNSU magic, and Anya gives the Arcanist steampunk. Then you also get the railroad boss fighting against the Union, which makes sense. She could become the smuggler since the Arcanists are losing Colette and still need to smuggle soul stones to have money fund their operation. Her crew could probably look a little different, but that, but she's best in the Arcanist. So interesting, kind of echoing the point that you were making about funding sources, which is something I hadn't considered. Yeah, yeah that makes. That, wait, no, I said that. 
Yeah. Okay. I'm losing losing my brain. <laughs> um, I didn't think the think about the aspect of her taking over the smuggling. I just think she'd just bring come in with a giant bag of money with a dollar sign printed on it and drop it on Karis's desk. Um, but smuggling works, and it'd be a lot easier since you know cranes is her business. Um, although she, I I don't think the guild will let her anywhere near the Iron Ram. That's that's my only issue here. Like I like the I like the thought, and I think with a little bit of doing in the in the writing, they could make that work. But I'm not sure it's the it's a, a seamless fit just because of exactly your point. Like she operates a private rail line a series of rail lines outside of the city in order to smuggle through the breach you would either have to make alliance with the thunders and assuming you know about their breach up north or Mm -hmm. you have to get access to the city itself but maybe just her expertise in logistics gives her some way to kind of figure out how to get a smuggling system going on through the breach i'm sure stuff gets smuggled on the train normally they don't all have to go through underground tunnels and stuff so Mm -hmm. um i think i think there's still something there potentially um, and then I think this is the last Anya <laughs> comment here, but Addis552 says, Anya would, in my opinion, be a better fit for Arcanist and Edmund SU. She already has an antagonistic relationship with both Tony and May through the whole capitalist versus workers dichotomy. And it could make sense for her to bankroll the Arcanist as a shadow investor in order to undermine the guild. So every, it seems like a lot of people had the, the same thought uh, as you did, which is that she's the financer for the, for the Arcanist. Mm-hmm. Taken. I'm sure if they brought her into Arcanist, they would play up the whole lightning business a bit more. Um, so I know I feel like since they're a human faction, every human faction needs something at least mildly mundane looking. And I don't think anything w- that we have currently in Arcanist really fits that. There's plenty of mundane stuff in MSU. Um, but yeah. I guess not. Marcus's crew certainly doesn't look mundane. Raspy's part of it does, but not really. Um, yeah, I guess that's a good point. You'd want like a, like a, like a straight man crew to, to go which, with all the craziness. Yeah. Which of these people is going to walk down the streets of downtown Malfo City and not immediately get rest- arrested? <laughs> right. <laughs> For sure, yeah. Um, okay, so I, I clearly did a bad job organizing the, the order with these, but um, going back to English Ivan, so Benel, um English Ivan absolutely seems like he was initially slated for Union Arcanist split. He just doesn't fit the Explorers at all. So I think he could potentially work for being both Union and Arcanist, but the idea that he doesn't fit the Explorers at all, I don't know if I agree with that. What do you think? He's a secret agent, man, and he works with the other like rich, fancy... Uh, I don't know. I, I think he he fits out. he fits in that um one he part of his lore is based off of Penny Dreadful, which it was kind of the pulpy aspect they were going for with the Explorer Society. And while it's named the Explorer Society, I believe has directly stated that they wanted something along the lines of League of an Extraordinary Gentleman and a gentleman thief slash spy really fits that motif. Mm-hmm. Um even though it doesn't really fit with the idea of explorers. I mean, he went and explored the dark realm. Didn't okay, work out. Well, yeah. for him. well I yeah. guess it did in the long run. <laughs> yeah. I think we don't know enough about like what happened between the last time we saw him and where he's at now to really see oh. or what he does oh. on a day to day basis for that matter. So, Almost like they left it intentionally vague so that they could use that information as it's slotted into some important piece of lore later. You know, I almost like weird planning this stuff. (laughs) I think I said this when I was on the podcast with you doing the talking about the lore, but and filling in the plot holes. But one of the frustrating things about a lot of this is that they tend not to go back into the history and fill in any of the lore. So a lot of the stuff that's gotten skipped over, we're probably never going to get answers for. And that's kind of frustrating, but yeah, I you just gotta keep harassing them. <laughs> apparently, that 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 works. I I'm proof of that. Um, but I could see like I feel like we've gotten pseudo answers on occasion buried in through the breach stuff. Mm. But um, I think the big problem is that Malfo just isn't putting out enough lore. I really miss the chronicles, Same. and I wish they would spend a little bit more time on stories. But stories don't 
sell as well as models so i can kind of see why i was just hoping that they get to a spot where like hey we can start giving more than just a couple of stories a year um please i, I need my lore um why, why didn't anyone argue if damien should be in the mnsu or not why why no one gave me damien comments actually. <laughs> i don't think i got any feedback on damien um i think it's pretty clear that he should be seen the arcanist <laughs> Um, what we'll say about Damien is like if you, because you have Damien and Arcanist, I could see you make an argument for Sandy being exclusively MNSU. Because what it seems like is that uh, Sandy's off being too sad, and Damien's sort of taking over the role of teaching mages. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it would kind of if you if you're just thinking about it from like a who fills the niche thing that makes mm-hmm. sense. I'm not sure that would give Sandy a good reason to abandon them, but not not a great reason. But also would give you the option of taking someone else and making them the dual faction one. I'm just saying it would it would, it yeah. would open up your options. Does anyone say anything about Nexus either? Uh, I mean, not Nexus. Yeah, it's a bad. A... My bad. No, I don't think anybody said anything at all about Jets actually. Who did, where did I even put her? I don't remember. Yeah, it's so you put her in Arcanist, which I agree with, but it's so weird. Like she barely fits into the Explorers theme. I yeah. I enjoy her because she's so cool and unique. The idea of a good lich, but yeah, I guess that's probably why she fits in Arcanist. Why people aren't arguing is like she's so inherently tied to magic, yeah. and again, it's another thing of like Arcanists are willing to accept more and more extreme factions because they have powerful ties to magic and possibly a beef with the guild um, for some reason or another. I mean, Yedza is very much the um, resurrectionist, but not resurrectionist. Uh, which I don't think the MNSU would be particularly happy to deal with. Right. I also, along those lines, I would I also see the Arcanist being more likely to go out and try to find stranger people to recruit to their cause, whereas the union is like, we're just trying to fight for the rights of the workers. We're not really concerned about Bone Grandma running around in the in the mountains. Yeah, there's and also likely she, they'd run into her. I think she also has the damped, which would be uh, kind of a weird thing to put into Arcanus with the Blessed. Um, but honestly, you could possibly just not have the damned or the bliss i guess we could argue about what models would still go with or not but uh, the the um surveyors like would fit perfectly in arcanus mm. yeah they're just effectively rock mages yeah yeah that would be kind of cool i think she would look good in in arcanus as well um mm-hmm. kind of fits in with with the rest of them um it's a lot of just complaining about anya i think the consensus <laughs> is I'm wrong on Anya and everyone else. We're, we're pretty good. No, you get, you got to put your foot, you got to get demand that you were right. <laughs> yeah. I think that's, that's pretty much it. There was a couple more comments that were off topic. I don't know if we want to touch any of these, but um, Ramos in the Arcanist kicked out of the union from Napoleon six zero seven one thoughts on that. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, that would be one less master you would have to develop for third edition. Mm. And obviously you would have beef with Ironsides. Um, I'm not sure. Like, you could, Obviously you could take out one of the ones that we were just incredibly unsure of how they would fit in there, like Nexus. Um, I'm curious yeah, I can if their see. comment was suggesting that they didn't intend, like originally, they didn't intend to remove Ramos from the game, and they wanted to, they were going to keep him in Arcanus, or if they're just saying that that's the way that it could work in the long run because he got arrested in Second Edition. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess you know it could things could have changed. Yeah, he got arrested in Second Edition, but he was still a playable model. So it, they didn't say, "Oh, he's been arrested now in the lore. You you can't play him." Um, they could have definitely like said, okay, if he's going to stew until we get to third edition, then he's going to come back in a big way. That would make a lot of sense. Yeah. My point was just that when they came into third edition, he was already in jail. And if the plan was to have him go to Deadman's hand, it didn't matter whether they did Arcanist and MNSU or they did explorers, he would still be dead man's hand. But to your point, if, if they, uh, if they plan to keep him in Arcanist, they could have very easily written around that. So, mm-hmm. 
Um, honestly, could see Hamlin coming to the Arcanist fully. His story sets up his animosity with the other outcasts and could see Karis bringing him over for help weakening the city. Ian Schreiner, 7998. What do you think about Hamlin being in any faction or also the Arcanist? Um, we tyrants, do tyrants, do, uh, tyrants do not willingly work with each other. Pandora's kind of jammed them into a box, and because they're in, in a box, Nightmare is okay with them. That's why Neverborn get a ride with three of them. Um, and because they're an outcast, they just they sort of exist in the same place. They're they're the bin where everything gets tossed in, which is why Obliteration and um, Plague hang out together. But Plague is the active one in. Uh, He's the one at the controls, and we're seeing Raspy slowly lose more and more of her control. So I don't see those working too well together, but that's that's fairly that's a strong opinion about a small, a relatively small thing in the grand scheme of things. Mm. Um, obviously, if he's going to go into one, if he had to go into one of them, Arcanists. Um, no, actually, the the Brotherhood of the Rat, the the Rat Catchers Union. I could actually see him going in M and S U. Them not knowing that the rats are actually controlled by this this evil tyrant. Same uh, way with you saying that. Um, oh, was it Anya? Like they accepted the the rest of the models, and Anya just kind of came along with them. Um, oh crap! <laughs> yeah. My 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 issue is that we've all we we've seen in, at least in third edition how Hamlin deals with people that he wants to work with, and that is to say, do the thing I want you to do, or I'll come kill you, and then they fight. So I, I'm not sure it would work for him joining any more organized faction than the Outcasts if if he even stays in the Outcasts. It doesn't really make sense for him to be in the Outcasts, being that they're a little bit more cohesive now. But he's got to be somewhere. So I don't mm-hmm. think it makes a ton of sense. I think Karis. Would he would tell Karis what to do, and Karis would be like, "Rats are flammable. Good luck." <laughs> and then the last one is from Mar Marl Fox Moken. I think it was a good idea to not split, as it would have removed a lot of the intrigue of the faction. There's enough gray right now to where you can't outright say they're good or evil. I'd argue that's what makes the factions interesting, because every faction has that element of people with good and people with bad intentions. The split would have made a very clear distinction between extremists and people who just want equal treatment. So I think this is actually something that we were talking about on my Discord mm-hmm. right after the video went up. So I wanted to kind of end off with this because I think that's a fantastic point. That is, that is exactly correct. Um, you need ambiguity with the factions. You can't have a clearly good guys or entirely bad guys. Why the resurrectionists have Molly? is um you can't write them all off that's just how malifaux has been uh it's in it's integral to the game and the fluff so as much as i would have loved to have an mnsu faction they would have had to vilify some of the existing masters more so or introduce some pretty negative aspects of it like hanlon or nexus yeah i think that's uh i think that's a great point and i don't think i can put it any better than you just did so I think we will leave it there. If All anyone right. has any other ideas, any other thoughts, anything that we didn't touch on here, if you still disagree with me, if you want to yell at me about Anya, feel free to drop a comment and let yeah. us know. Uh, Doug, what do you have? What do you have going on in the near future? Anything you want to plug? Oh, jeez. Um, obviously, Steam Pirate Scoundrels is still going. We're still putting out very vastly different episodes. You'll have one about meta and how to play the game in one episode and one. Talking about butts, um, support favorite. artifactors union. I honestly genuinely appreciate comments and feedback. I just ne- need a little boost to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm enjoying it, but it's still just enough work that um, feedback is really appreciated. And send me models because, like, I'm mostly going through pe- stuff friends have given me and my small backlog behind me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I would especially like normally harder kits. Um, I'm still looking for a grave golem because I got a hold of some bone piles and those guys need to be done. Um, other than, oh, yes, of course. Good things happen. How did I forget that in the intro? Um, last year, I ran a charity event called Good Things Happen. We raised money for 
uh, St. Jude and a um, local charity in Iowa called Children's Cancer Connection. If you don't know my backstory, my child was uh, diagnosed with leukemia in 2001, and she's very recently gotten off chemotherapy, which has really been really great for us. But uh, charities have been, were really helpful during that period of time, and I just want to get back to them in my own special way. And we raised a lot of money last year, so we're excited for this year and hoping it's going to be an even bigger thing. But uh, come out to Des Moines on the 28th through the 30th of June if you can. Otherwise, you can also just do donate to our, our coffee, Ko-Fi, whatever. Um, it should be that shouldn't be that hard to find. Just look for good things happen, um, and I'll be posting the price support as it comes in because we'll be getting some cool stuff to give away for that as well. Amazing! So all that stuff is going to be linked below, and I will probably post reminders as we get closer. But everybody else should absolutely support all three of those things. Team Brad Scoundrel is hilarious. Artifactors Union. Everybody complains about building these models. If you need help, that's definitely the place to go. Huge thank you to the Extremely Cool Kids tier on Patreon, the Steam Powered Scoundrels, Dogmatize, and Devin. And thanks for watching.